So I just want to briefly talk about what we're going to speak about today and where we're going. And I think what would help the most for folks who are looking for data about the city's budget is really to understand the budget, how it works, and OMB's role in the budget, how and why we produce some of this data. And that'll give you much more insight into how it's reflected in the data portal and allow you to have some context to use and manipulate the data to either learn more about the budget, learn about the history um, of the financial and fiscal history of the city, and, uh, and dive a little deeper into what I think is um, a really fascinating um, area of city government. So first of all, what's OMB's role and mission? Well, our, our primary mission is, is to serve as the city's chief financial officer. And as part of that, what we do is make sure that the city's resources are used and managed efficiently and responsibly, and that the mayor's priorities are implemented effectively in terms of investments and policy priorities that require funding. And our responsibilities include um, executing the expense and capital budgets of the city. And I'm going to go on to discuss these things in a little more detail in a minute. Providing oversight to the 90 plus agencies and city and related entities. Um, and we also implement the borrowing and bond um, program of the city that allows us to fund the city's vast infrastructure program. Obviously, New York is um, a, a massive place and it has one of the large, it has the largest municipal budget in the country, and our budget is actually larger than something like 46 or 47 states. So you can imagine that the amount of data that we have, and the amount of, of information available is really impressive. So moving on, what I want to cover first is give you a, a broad overview of the expense and revenue budgets. When people think of a budget, a city budget, or what's your home budget, it's similar concepts, and this is what people tend to think of as the budget. It's the operating funds and the uh, funds we take in that allow us to fund city services, city programs, um, what have you, you know, the fire department, the police department. So let's start with the expense budget, which is sort of the, the basic and, and, and first uh, thing folks think about when they think about the budget office and what we do. So the budget itself is really the um, is a, the a single year's operating fund, okay? And what a budget does is it reflects priorities, it reflects choices, uh, it reflects you know a, among many alternatives which direction um, a particular mayor, a particular administration wants to go and invest resources in. Um, an important thing to remember about New York is that our budget and our budget process is far different than almost every other municipality in the country, and that we actually drop four budgets a year. We modify the budget four times a year. And I'll get into that in a little more detail in a minute, but a lot of what, what we're gonna talk about today, and the reason we're different, is a legacy of the fiscal crisis of the 70s. So as many of you know, uh, the city got into some financial trouble, and as a condition of being helped out of some of that trouble, the state implemented some oversight that required us to do things a little more frequently than other cities may. And we still we still follow that schedule as required by law and uh, state and local law. So every fiscal year, the current fiscal year, and we're currently in fiscal year 23, must remain balanced. That means revenues must equal expenses. Money in has to equal money out. All right. That's sort of our, our bedrock principle uh, here. Um, the budget also shows the anticipated income, and I'll get into that in a sec too, what sort of revenues we're going to take in and how we're going to spend the money over time or how we plan to spend the money. A budget is forecasting, right? And it also shows writ large how we're going to spend money and also the budget and it's in the documents drill down into how individual city agencies and entities plan to spend funds and the programs they're investing in and the services they're investing in. So it's a wide ranging document that, um, that really uh, catches um, just about every activity um, in the, the municipality's daily life, all right? Which is why I think it's actually fascinating, right? It touches everything. So very broadly speaking, when you're looking at our, the open data sets or when you're looking at budget documents, you're gonna see that the expense budget is, is 
divided into two broad categories, personal services and other than personal services. Very creative, I know. So personal services are um, salaries and fringe benefits of city employees, makes up a very large part of the city funded budget. As you can imagine, we have a, a large city workforce to that that affects all the important city programs and initiatives that we, we do on a, and fund on a daily basis. Other than personal services are things like supplies. The, you know, I'm looking at my pens, my pencils, my, my desktop, um, you know, utilities, the lights that are on right now, uh, our, our, our internet service, um, and contractual services. The city contracts out with a number of providers uh, on different levels to provide services that are not necessarily provided directly by city employees. All right, so personal services, other than personal services. And you'll see that when you look at our documents or, or you look at our open data sets, that will be how um, different units are broken down, starting with this very basic separation of funds into those two categories. All right, so, whoop. all right. The budget, as I said, is the, speaking technically, the current fiscal year, fiscal year 23. Out years are upcoming fiscal years. So when we do a financial plan, we don't just plan for what's happening in fiscal year 23 or whatever the current year may be. We also look four to five years ahead, depending on where we are in the budget cycle um, and forecast revenues and forecast expenses. Um, this is a way that uh, one is allows us to do our best planning. Um, it, it gives uh, us a sense of, of outlook of how much we need to save how much we need to, to stock away for a rainy day and how much we can spend over a long period of time and the type of income we expect to see over a long period of time. And it also gives New Yorkers, gives all of you a chance to understand what we expect to happen with the city's funding and finances. It's a, it's a very useful tool. Um, out years, unlike the current budget year, which must remain in balance, out years don't need to balance. We balance them as they become the upcoming budget year. So right now we're in fiscal year 23. Next fiscal year, which starts in July, will be fiscal year 24. As of the preliminary budget, which was in January, fiscal year 24 is balanced. Fiscal years 25, 26, and 27 are not and do not need to be, but they will be when their turn comes. And it's important to understand that the city has balanced, I believe, 40, 41, 42 consecutive annual budgets. So it's, it's something we take extraordinarily seriously. All right, so we were just talking about a financial plan. So we record updates to the budget and our finances through the financial plan. And I'll, I'll actually show you what that looks like in a minute in a very big picture. Uh, financial plans ex include um, forecasts and adjustments to spending, uh, include revenue forecasts, and we'll talk about revenue forecasts in a minute, revenue and revenue forecasts in a minute. And it includes, um, uh, planning, like I said, over four to five years, depending on where we are in the cycle, sometimes it, it, it's certain plans, a year will drop off because it's a prior year and you can't forecast backwards, you're forecasting forwards. So those years drop off. This is an excuse, the extraordinarily bad, um, uh, how, the way I dropped this in, it's not great, but I think it helps you to see what a, fi this is, what a financial plan is and what it looks like. Instead of me just talking about, we can look at it. This is actually the city's current financial plan as of the January preliminary budget. Again, it's you can see it's reflecting a five-year look. Um, you can see that you know here's the current fiscal year, and here's next fiscal year. You can see that this this year the current year is balanced. We balanced um, fiscal year 24. You can see that that um, revenue and expenses match, which means we're balanced. And out years these these three years right here are not yet balanced and will be, all right? Um, I think it's also important for me to point out that years operate for the most part independently. So adding something to the current fiscal year does not necessarily increase the next fiscal year and vice versa if, if, there is some, um, if there's some savings taken or a cut to something in this fiscal year, doesn't necessarily mean that happens next year. You, you, we have to, you have to, um, look carefully when you're looking at these numbers. The fiscal year 23 and 24, 25, 26, 27 operate independently, all right? Um, and this is actually, if you wanna look at this document yourself and see more information about it, this is in our fiscal year 
24 preliminary budget documents. It's in it's the one of the last two or three pages of what we call the summary book, which is the presentation the mayor gives when the mayor presents the preliminary budget. And it's available to you on our website and our publications page. It's, it's also very useful. It's very accessible. It's in a narrative form. And I encourage you to check it out. All right. So I thought I'd, I'd share a little about what we spend city taxpayer dollars on and, and other resources on. And what you can see is the largest share of our expense budgets for education, um, about 36-ish billion dollars. Um, and that's of a pie of 102.7 billion in fiscal year 24. That's next year's budget. The current year's budget as of the preliminary budget, which we just dropped in January, is 106.4 billion dollars. All right. So, and you can see, you know, this gives you a pretty good idea of, of how we use the city's resources and, you know, what, what, um, what we spend on. You can see the education and um, social services tend to make up a large uh, part of our spending. Revenue. Revenue is just like you earn, you know, a paycheck and that goes towards funding your needs. The city is funded through revenue sources. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about tax revenue sources in a second, but it's more than just that. So we all know what taxes are. We all pay taxes. On top of that, uh, we get funding from the state and federal governments. Those are that categories are categorical aid. That's what most people would call a grant. Right. So we receive state and federal grants um, and then other smaller sources um, as well um, within. I, I think this is interesting within our uh, tax revenue sources, which are the blue and orange that you can see there on the sort of on the right hand side from 12 midnight to eight o'clock or so. The largest single source of revenue is property taxes. Now, just a little fun tidbit for you. Um, New York operate the budget and our financial system are, operates much differently than other cities. We actually act more like a county or state. We also incorporate a school district. We incorporate water. We, we have in most in most um, municipalities, you know, there'll be a separate school district though that's run by the county or some other government entity or a separate water district, what have you. We we actually manage and fund all of that, which makes us kind of unusual. We also have a widely diverse tax base, so you see property taxes up there, and within the other taxes, for example, New York City has a personal income tax. Only a few cities in the country actually have a personal income tax. But the beauty of this revenue budget and the beauty of our revenue collections is that it's diverse. So if we have a year, for example, when personal income uh, taxes are down, for example, um, our property taxes tend to may remain very stable. So we don't see um, some of the swings by virtue of revenue drop offs as other cities might who don't have as diverse a tax base. And it's, it's a, a true benefit to uh, to um, the city and its ability to 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 its financial viability. Let's see, did I miss anything else? Oh, this is actually important. Um, we um, have economists who evaluate tax revenue based on economic circumstances and history, and they they um, do an amazing job of forecasting. And we always issue very cautious forecasts because we want to make sure that we live within our means. Because again, we have to balance, right? So revenues and expenses much must match. If we were not cautious, if we were out there making crazy projections about revenues and we're wrong, um, we have a problem, right? So we're very cautious, we're very steady. And by that process, that is how um, New York City has managed to um, you know, balance so many consecutive budgets, even in very difficult and challenging years, it's because we're very cautious and we're very careful and we carry that through. It's part of our culture. At OMB. All right, let's talk a little about the budget process. I, I mentioned that the city's budget uh, process is unique. And I mentioned that um, it's unique among cities. It's also unique among states. I mean, there's some states that only drop a budget every two years. I think Texas has a, uh, an every other year budget they, they, they drop. And most cities gear up to budget once a year. We gear up and modify the financial plan four times a year. So we're always very busy here at OMB um, working uh, for the citizens to make sure their tax dollars are used properly and that the city remains um, strong financially. 
So this, this is sort of a, a cyclical look at our budget. So our fiscal year begins on July 1 and ends on June 30th. All right. So what you can see in the circle is I have the fiscal year as it begins up at the top. But what we usually consider the beginning of our sort of fiscal time is, is really the sort of the preliminary budget in January. So the preliminary budget, as I said, is the first time that an upcoming year must balance. It also is an opportunity for the mayor um, and the administration to reflect their financial priorities, their policy priorities. And, um, and after that's released, it's the charter date, I believe is January 16th that we must release that by. Um, we then continue with the cycle. And then in April, we, we release what's called the executive budget. Again, the current year and the upcoming year must remain in balance. And we make adjustments based on uh, additional policy priorities. Maybe we have a savings program. Maybe we're adding to our, our reserves. Um, you know, there's a variety of, of, of things we can do with resources, as you know, um, to implement city activities, city programs, city initiatives, and, what, and, and to plan to be able to fund those, those important things. So then after the April uh, executive budget happens, we go, on to, we go on through the cycle and we begin to work with the city council and negotiate with the city council who must ultimately by June 30th approve of the budget. Uh, meanwhile, all the way through, uh, you know, after each budget is released, after the preliminary budget, after the executive budget is released, the city council holds hearings in which OMB and agencies appear and the city council um, has the opportunity to question us and agencies about how resource, resources are being used and share their perspective on how they should be used. And then again, as we head towards leave April and head towards June, um, we enter a negotiation process and then release a budget after the city council votes that is um, um, the mutually accepted budget by the administration and the council, all right? So after June is over, you would hope we would have a nice um, quiet summer um, and that's partially true. <laughs> We're always busy here. But then again, we have to modify the budget before the end of the calendar year. That's another requirement. So that usually happens sort of uh, traditionally in November. We call it the November financial plan. And it's, it's usually a technical plan, meaning we make sure the grant funds that need to be added have been added. Um, you know, we just make sort of technical, uh, usually, usually not fascinating or, or incredibly interesting. Um, adjustments to the budget. And that's reflected. It doesn't tend to get as much media coverage or uh, most folks don't even know we're doing it. But it's an important part of our process leading towards, again, the January preliminary budget. So what you can see is it's, it's a cycle that repeats and repeats and repeats. And in between um, these, these uh, budget drops, like I said, there's city council hearing. After the budget drops in July, the adopted budget, we go before the state and go to the um, uh, we go before a financial control board and present the budget to the state and the city controller, the state controller and represent the governor and representatives of the governor. Um, um, we, we present the budget, answer questions, and they um, make sure that we are we are continuing to meet the um, statutory requirements set by the state. Um, and um, again, we have yet in the city's history to not to fail to meet those requirements. We've met them consistently. Um, every single year since they were imposed in, I believe, 77 or 78, something like that. So I think um, the budgeting process is not just a timeline, it's, it's activities, right? It's things we do to make sure that we're um, incorporating uh, needs into the funding process. So, and this is a very broad take. This is just sort of a, a 30,000 foot view of, of how it works. But typically agencies are on the ground they um, have ideas about programs and services, um, ex, you know, providing new services, different sorts of services, um, interesting um, sort of um, uh, new and, and different things they might want to try, innovative things, what have you, or whatever. Maybe it's not as interesting things like need to buy a 20,000 new pencils. I don't know. So agencies submit budget proposals to OMB and our staff who are in touch with agencies daily, year round. So they have sort of an on the ground understanding as well about what's going on. Agencies submit their ideas and their plans. We review them, we go back and forth, we evaluate their, this, their, whether they're financially sound, whether the city can afford them, are they being, are they the proposals efficient? 
Um, so um, that happens throughout the year, but as we get closer to plan time, it happens a little more um, intentionally. Um, we review and assess the proposals and we develop recommendations, which we then go to city hall with. And we, we discuss these with different policy folks at city hall and ultimately the mayor who um, makes choices about what he or she may or may not want to include in the, the current budget, the upcoming budget, what have you. Uh, and then with the mayor's recommendations in hand, uh, we implement the budget. We affect those priorities in a financially sound way that maintains the city's strong fiscal management. So again, what you can see is the coming together of funding and providing services and, and, and paying for things in a way that's efficient, effective, and is fiscally responsible. That's another one of our mantras here at OMB. So not only do we have expense budgets, which or most people tend to think of as a budget, right? We also have a capital budget, right? Capital budget means that we're funding, you know, people tend to think of it as, you know, buildings, um, roadways. Um, we have some bridges that we fund that we work on or build, um, that we have built. Um, or other, we call them capital assets. Now a capital asset can be any of those things. It can also be in certain circumstances and cases, vehicles, machinery, and there's a whole set of requirements that we evaluate at OMB to determine whether an asset um, meets the qualifications to be considered, to be called capitalized, to be a capital asset. And we, um, those, recommend, uh, those requirements are set out by the city controller and state law. All right, so we're very careful to use bond proceeds appropriately for only for capital assets, right? And that's that gets us to the next bullet, which is we use, we, we implement a borrowing program. That's what a bond program is, right? And we borrow money under a, a number of different, um, um, you know, different groups that are within OMB, or, or I'm sorry, not within OMB, that are affiliated with the city. And the, the one that when people tend to think of New York City bonds tends to be our New York City bonds, which is our general obligation bonds. And you should all know that, um, for example, we were just upgraded um, in a rating by, I believe it was uh, Fitch or SMP. I think it was Fitch. Forgive me, OMB staff, if I'm wrong here. But we maintain a very strong bond ratings, um, which is one of the reasons we're cautious is to make sure that our financial um, um, ratings stay high so that our cost of borrowing uh, and cost of funding assets stays low, right? So we also release capital plans. They're a little different than a, the budget I, we've been talking about and a little different than a sort of a expense budget. But um, we have a, a, a capital commitment plan. Whoops, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Capital commitment plan on top of the capital budget, right? So the capital commitment plan authorizes projects in current and upcoming fiscal years. So the capital commitment plan says that, okay, this year we're planning on funding X billion dollars in X number of projects. And next year we're doing X number of projects or continuing those projects. Many projects stretch over years because they're complex, right? Um, and that's how, that's how um, folks who are outside of OMB can check on the um, progress and funding of different capital needs throughout the city, throughout the boroughs. Uh, in odd number of years, which we're in now, we release something called the 10-year capital strategy. Now that's not a budget, it's not a commitment plan, it is a strategy. And it's a long-term look at the city's capital outlay. So the 10-year capital strategy as of the preliminary budget is $159.3 billion, oh, spread over a 10-year period, right? But what's interesting and important about the 10-year capital strategy is it's not just um, funding levels. It reflects the city's priorities and um, it reflects our long-term vision of how we want to, in, uh, to invest capital funds. So I urge you, if you're interested in this, to go to, the, go to our website, if you want to look at a narrative form of this and look at our 10-year ca capital strategy document. If you want to look at the most recent, it's the preliminary 10-year capital strategy that was released in the preliminary budget this January. And it, in a narrative form, in, in, um, describes what the priorities and principles are that we follow and will be following in making capital investments with 
it's with city uh, bond funds. And it's an interesting document and gives you a really interesting take on how we finance, what we're financing and what we're looking to do over a long period of time. All right. And a narrative, easy to access format. Um, so you can see that just by looking at this chart uh, that, you know, a good piece of it goes to infrastructure and uh, government operations, which is a pretty broad category that encompasses a number of smaller um, categories, obviously. Most of our funding um, it tends to be in the 70%, 75% range, goes to maintaining and improving existing assets. We call that state of good repair. It's very important that we maintain our assets, right? Um, and the rest of it goes to funding new, new, a new school or a new gym or uh, you know what, what have you. So that is, all reflected in our long-term tenure capital strategy that you can review both as a document in a narrative form and the data is on our open data portal and you can review the, the numbers actually and compare them to prior years and what have you, or by funding goals, what have you, it's, it's interesting. So knowing, having that context, knowing what we do, knowing a little more now about the city budget, I think it should be easier for folks out there to understand what it means when you look at our data sets, right? What is it? What are you looking for? What fiscal year are you looking for? Are you looking for expense or capital funding? Um, so I think I hope that I've given you enough context that when you do your open data searches and when you do your um, comparisons and when you when you download those data sets, which are vast, that you're able to more easily hone in on what you need, what you're interested in, and what's helpful to you. Okay. So OMB, before I talk about open data, I just want to talk about our publications. Now our publication, the data in our publications is reflected in our open data portal um, uh, uh, data sets. But we also have online, uh, if you're old school and you want to actually look at it on, on paper or on PDF, um, you can go to our website and we separate it out by financial year. And every plan we release uh, different types of documents, whether some of, them, some of them are required by law at different points in time, some of them just by convention and history we publish at different times. But we publish a wide, wide, wide range of data that um, covers uh, a tremendous amount of information and different ways of looking at some of that information, which I, uh, it can be very helpful um, because it, it can, it's complex and it, it, it can be challenging at times. But when you become familiar with our publications and how we, how we show information, it becomes actually uh, a lot easier. All right. So we have archived on our website publications going back to 2002, if you're interested. And uh, as I said, a wide range, an incredibly broad range of information. Now, we also put, which is why I'm here, of course, we put a lot of information onto our data sets in open data. Now, we have 67 data sets currently, um, wide range of information for everything from um, the expense budget which is what most people you know, think of as what the budget or most people seem to be interested in because it's our most popular data set by far. It's updated within a short period of time after every update. So after the preliminary budget, after the executive budget, after the November mod, and after the adopted budget, we add that financial plans data to this data, to this very large data set. So you can compare different categories of spending by years. You can you can look at one year, you can, you, there's un, virtually unlimited ways to really review this data and, and learn and, and compare what the city's been doing. It, it's fascinating. Um, so we also have capital budget, capital commitment plan, and 10-year capital strategy categories as data sets. We have, if you're interested in employment and the growth in the city's employment, I mean, the city writ large, the five boroughs, not necessarily city employees. If you're interested in employment growth um, over time, you can see that. Um, if you're interested in our full-time and full-time equivalent staffing levels, uh, that talk about city employees, you can see that. And uh, again, compare over time. I am I believe our data sets, at least they go back in time to different points in time. I believe the expense budget goes back to 2015 or 2016, something like that. Might be a little further might be a, a year or so on either side of that, but ballpark. And again, if you need data going back further, uh, we have publications that you can reference that contain information. All right. So um, I want to thank you for participating in this talk. I love talking about the budget. I could go on for hours. I'm not going to subject you to that, uh, but I really appreciate your time and your interest 
And if you all have questions, I'm happy to answer um, any that, that you may have. Alex, looks I'm, I'm not seeing anybody. Oh, okay, someone, that's a good question, Ann. So OMB, Ann's asking what the difference is between OMB and the Department of Finance. So the Department of Finance has a, a related but different mission than OMB, and they do a lot of things. Um, one interesting thing uh, is that the former uh, director, the uh, commissioner of the Department of Finance is now the uh, OMB budget director, Jacques Sheha. So what Department of Finance does is, <laughs> the, what the, um, Anne's just pointing out, that's why she asked. Um, the Department of Finance deals with revenue, tax collections, tax assessments, um, and I think they also um, are the host of the of the sheriff's department, I believe, which is I think kind of interesting. And um, so they play an integral role, an integral part in helping us assess what the city's tax revenues are going to be. And they also um, uh, have a very deep understanding work with the property roles, which evaluate uh, the the value of property in New York City and and anticipated tax uh, property tax resources. So they are. Uh, a very important and integral role in the city's um, ecosystem of finance. Let's see. Um, Caroline has a question. Uh, thank you, Ann, for that question, by the way. And I, I'm curious why you, why you asked. But um, Caroline's asking, how are one-off projects that aren't accounted for in the budget funded? Um, I'm not sure I. I'm not sure I understand that. I mean, if you're asking, do budget do Programs have to be funded one year at a time, maybe? Uh, no, um, they can be funded for a year. They can be funded um, what we call baseline, which means every year. Um, so there's different ways to fund programs. I mean, we could fund a program in 2024 that's not funded in 2023. Um, there's some flexibility there, if that's what you're asking. Um, let's see, uh, Christine is asking how the pandemic impacted our budgeting. Um, wow, an excellent question. Um, so during during the period of the pandemic, um, the city's revenue forecast forecast dropped by in a very short period of time, dropped by something in the neighborhood of nine billion dollars in that area. So we obviously um, had a, had a challenge ahead of us to maintain the very important services and programs that New Yorkers rely on. And obviously, there's safety concerns that have to be funded. There's the fire department still has to be funded. So um, we, um, the, the very big picture is that we're able to draw down on some reserves we had and, and towards the, um, the end, uh, towards the, when we got over the hump there, we were able to, and, and obviously let me take a step back. Not only were we forecasting revenue loss, our expenses were going through the roof because we now had to fund test and trace. We had massive health problems. We had, um, you know, obviously. So, it was a challenge, massive, massive unplanned expenditures at a time where we're seeing massive forecast revenue drops. So fortunately, eventually, the federal government stepped in and gave us, uh, not just us, but planned a countrywide, nationwide, um, a stimulus program that allowed us to continue funding services and it also allowed us to develop special programs that um, that are, were designed to help folks who are impacted specifically by the pandemic, especially in areas that were traditionally underserved, who tended to have the um, largest um, and most pronounced consequences from the pandemic. Um, so those those stimulus funds were critical towards the recovery, and they are dropping off in uh, year 2025. So good question. Uh, let's see. Um, L Ifers, we must be balanced. Someone wants to know how is that accounted for when they're unanticipated? So I'd rather not answer specific questions about specific programs, um, but I think that's an excellent question. Um, but you know, we the city has um, forecast uh, that we are going to uh, you know accumulate 4.2 billion dollars in cost by the middle of next year uh, to care for and house asylum seekers. So, you know, we're working with the state and federal governments to, uh, to help um, fund that. Uh, and that's gonna be a critical piece of our ability to, um, to continue funding those programs and, and receiving some, some um, help back. Um, let's see, oh, someone's in journalism school, that's great. 
And my professor said, OMB is very helpful. Wow. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, professor. Can we call with questions about interpreting budget information to make sure we're interpreting and characterize? You know, we, um, we regularly um, get questions from uh, journalism students who are doing working on local papers, or I know they're working on assignments periodically that are going to be published in their J school, um, uh, you know, newspapers. So what we ask though, is that you go through the city hall press office and the city hall press office uh, can route any questions you may have uh, to us um, and, and, and help you um, resolve uh, questions. That's a good question. Thank you. And good luck um, in J school. Let's see. Anne is asking, how are Citywide Initiative Council funding requests reviewed? Um, citywide, if you're talking about the one year, so city council funds can fund on their own. They have discretionary funding to fund one year at a time. And those are evaluations they get to make um, and uh, choices they get to make. Uh, so that reflect their policy choices. So, you know, we, because, you know, we, we for lack of a better word, draft the budget and, and compile the budget. Those are included at the end of the year in what's called the Schedule C. And you can go to the council's website and look at the Schedule C for each preceding year or a subsequent uh, past year rather. And that reflects their, um, some of their priorities, what they want to invest in and what they're interested in supporting. And it's actually an interesting document. It helps understand the council's priorities and how they dovetail with um, administration priorities. Let's see. I think that's about it. Anybody else? These are all great questions. By hi. The way. Hi. I just have a question regarding the pie chart you showed, where you showed um, the city's expenditure, uh, where education makes up uh, 30%. Uh, a little more, but yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I remember being FDNY, but I don't think I saw NYPD. It's all within administration of justice. So um, oh, we, yeah, it's rolled in. I mean, just from a, a very practical perspective with, you know, 90 agencies and related entities that are funded, you know, you, you can't have a pie chart with um, 90 slices. Um, so we group and categorize some uh, to make it easier uh, for folks to just generally see what we're is there any NYPD officers that are sort of grouped into the education part of the, the pie chart? You know, I'd rather not answer questions. This is an open data um, um, talk. So I'd rather not answer specific questions about specific agency budgets. But, um, you know, there's there's plenty of information, I think, out there uh, in the world about what what part what makes up DOE's budget and what makes up PD's budget. But I, I appreciate the question. Anybody else? All right, Alex, I, th I think we're good. Oh, actually, Alex, oh, I'm sorry. Let me see if there's another question coming in. Okay, good question. So this is a good question because I think people, this this is complicated and, um, and not necessarily intuitive. The question is, do the financial plan out years change each year to keep years balanced? For example, Fiscal year 2023 and 2024 are balanced, while fiscal year 25 and 26 are not. Does this also change if the administration changes? So let me answer the second question first. No, um, this is not determined by the administration. Every administration um, sin, you know, plays by the same rules. It's, it's law, right? So uh, every administration is responsible for, excuse me, responsible for keeping the current year balanced. And, the, and balancing the upcoming year in preliminary budget and keeping that year in balance. So those are not those are not um, policy choices. Those are those are what we must do and what we must do to be uh, responsible stewards of the city's um, of, uh, budget. So the the first question, do you think? Well, the financial plan it's it sort of rolls right. So as we go from financial fiscal year to fiscal year, years drop off, like fiscal year 22, which was last fiscal year's dropped off. And, um, and, and it rolls along in sort of four or five year blocks. So out years become budget years eventually. Um, years that aren't in the financial plan become out years and then budget years. So I, if that's what you're asking, I, I mean, that's, that's what happens. So, and, and, and at no point is, 
is any administration required to balance an out year, uh, you know, a far out year. That's just not required by law. All right, let's see. Aside from the general fund and the capital fund, let's see. Um, I'm not, it, it's hard, as someone's asking how are funds dispersed? And I think I recognize this person's name. Um, how are funds dispersed? I'm not sure I necessarily understand. I mean, we have a general fund, which is sort of like, you know, the city's bank account that we pay for things out of. Um, and that that is just funds that we use in line with how funds are budgeted. Um, if, um, what other funds dispersed? You know, it, it's, it, it's hard to answer that question um, it, simply in, in a format like this, because grant funds sometimes come with restrictions, um, sometimes don't. So a lot of times those grant funds are spent in a way that is consistent only with how that grant can be used. Some grant funds we get up front, some are reimbursement based. So that's, um, I'm not entirely sure I understand the question, but if you're asking, um, it, yeah, I'm sorry. I, it's, it's too hard a question to answer broadly with, with the way the question is framed. Um, if you want to be more focused on or you put it up in a different way, I could take another shot at it. And by the way, there's no, ca just, there's no capital fund necessarily. Um, we use bond funds to fund um, infrastructure and capital programs. All right, looks like, oh, is there another one? How often is the capital budget data set updated? And I think maybe this is our last question, Alex. Um, the capital, um, the capital um, budget data sets are updated as the capital plans um, are, um, are released. They're not always released um, at the same time that the budget plans are released. So I don't know the exact number of days, but a certain number of days after a capital budget or a capital commitment plan or an update is released, the um, data is added to the data sets. And I, frankly, I don't know the exact number of days. What's the time range? Um, you know, it depends on, um, it depends on the, this part of the cycle. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Those are excellent questions. I, I appreciate, obviously, your listening, and I appreciate your interest in this um, and hope you remain interested in the budget. And I hope you're able to dig into the open data and learn more about how the city operates.